In this video we're going to take a look at tangent and secant lines. And um, we'll look at how we can use tangent and secant lines when we're dealing with distance time graphs. But here's a, let's just start with the definition of these, these two, uh, two terms. Uh, I'm going to start actually with a secant line first. So I've got a graph here. This would be the y-axis and this would be the x-axis. And um, I'm going to pick a couple of different points on the graph here and I am going to draw a line as best as I sort of can. Through those two points. Okay, so when when we have a line that crosses a graph in two places, we call this a secant line. So the secant line is a line that crosses a graph in two places, just like this one right here. And there's lots of different secant lines that we could draw that would hit this curve in two places. So how is a tangent line different? Well, let's swap colors here. And let's say I drew a line that crossed this graph in just one place. Like so. So now this red graph, or sorry, this red line here, just nicks this curve here at this one place. So the red one we call a tangent line. So the tangent line is a line that touches a curve at exactly one point, just, just touches. So it doesn't go straight across the line, it just kind of nicks the curve as it glances, glances by the graph. That's, that's a tangent line. So let's see sort of what the significance of these two lines are, the secant line and the tangent line, if we're to look at uh, a distant time graph. So here's a situation. I've got a graph plotted here. I've got distance on my y-axis and time on my x-axis. And uh, so we can see a situation here where um, looks like it takes about four seconds for it to move one meter. Uh, eight seconds, it's at three meters. I've got a couple of points plotted on here. And at 12 seconds, it's moved uh, 10 meters. So we can see that it's it's gradually picking up, gradually picking up speed here, because the slope. Remember, let's go back and review this. So slope is rise over run. The rise are my y values, so that's going to be something in meters. So some change in. We use this symbol delta to represent change in. So we're going to have a certain number of meters divided by the run, which is a certain number or change in seconds. So the slope of this curve is going to represent meters per second, which we know is speed. Speed of the of this particle or whatever it is we're talking about here. So, yeah, so here we can see the slope is not very steep. The slope of this line here is not very steep, but the slope gets steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper. So as time increases here, the speed, because slope in this example would be rise over run, meters over seconds, meters per second is a speed. Um, so gradually we're going to get steeper, uh, steeper and steeper as time goes on, which means as the slope increases, the speed's going to increase. Let's look at, at the secant line. Uh, let's make that red. And I'll try to get it in these two points here. Okay, so here's a secant line. That's a line, remember, that goes through the two points. Now let's find the slope of this secant line. So we use m for slope. Slope of, uh, and we've done this before in other math courses, we can always find slope by going rise over run. Now we need to figure out what these points are. So this has an x value of 12 and a y value of 10. This point here has an x value of 8 and a y value of 3. So rise over run. Remember, we can find the rise by subtracting the two y values. 
and we can find the run by subtracting the two x values. So the rise going from this point to this point would be 10 minus 3 or 7 and the run going from this point to this point would be 12 minus 8 which is 4. So we can see that the slope of this secant line is 7 fourths or about 1.75 meters per second. So in terms of what does this actually mean, the slope of the secant line being 1.75 meters per second, well what that actually finds for us is our average speed between 8 seconds and 12 seconds. So the slope of a secant line then will tell us the average speed over the time interval. And so we can kind of see that. So right, right here, this blue graph, our original graph, the slope is not as steep as the red line. So at sort of around 8, 9, and 10 seconds, the slope of this, or the speed of this graph is, the, is a little bit less than what the average would be. Right about here, it'd be about the same speed, because the slope's the same. And once we get up to about 11 and 12 seconds, the speed of the uh, particle is actually faster than what the average is. But between 8 and 12 seconds, the average speed on that interval is 1.75 meters per second, because the curves start and end at the exact same, same spot. So just remember, whenever you find the slope of a secant line, if we've got a distance time curve, we found the average speed on that interval. So now what if we did uh, a tangent line? Come on, draw me a line. So let's do a tangent line right here at that point 0.83. So there my green line just nicks the curve right there. So here we would do the slope of the tangent line. And we'll talk a little bit later about how we actually can go about doing that because that's a bit of a problem here. We need two points and we don't have two points. A tangent line only crosses the graph in one point. So that gives us a bit of a problem how we're going to actually find the slope at that point. But here's what we can tell is that the slope of the tangent line the slope of the tangent line is the exact speed at that point. And sometimes we call that the instantaneous velocity. So if we happen to knew the slope of the tangent line, then we would know at 8 seconds exactly what the speed was at that point. And that's, we're going to spend a lot of time in this course dealing with this slope of the tangent line. Because that's what we eventually will call the derivative. Um, so, secant line, a line that goes through two points on the curve. Tangent line, a line that just nicks or just barely touches the curve at one point. And if we're dealing with a distance time curve, the um, secant line would represent, the slope of the secant line would represent the average speed over the time interval, whereas the slope of the tangent line would represent the exact speed at that one point that we were tangent to the curve at. So those are secant lines and tangent lines.